Hey there again, folks. Welcome back to New Day, New Game. Today we're playing Wanderlust Travel Stories. Now, I would like to thank the folks over at Different Tales and Walkabout for letting me try this game out for free. This, I think, is supposed to be kind of like a visual novel. Uh, focus... From the little bit from that I read on the description and from the screenshots, I think it's supposed to be more of an educational visual novel. I think the story is supposed to be fictional, but you're supposed to learn things, you know, through the story, you know, through the travel, uh, the character, I guess, is traveling around the world, stuff like that, so. I'm guessing you learn stuff about different places, that sort of thing, you know. Interesting way to be educational. Uh, so yeah, I was like, that's an interesting game, that's not your normal, typical visual novel, you know. Uh, our game in general, so I'm like, I want to try that, you know. I don't get out very much uh, these days. I'm, I'm lucky if I make it out of the house uh, twice a month. Uh, um, I'm, I've got a situation uh, keeping me that limited. Though, honestly, it's always been hard to get me out of the house. Uh, though with my situation, I'm, I'll get into it. But anyway... So I could use some travel. <laughs> anyway, let's start a new story. I'm waiting. But thanks for saying please. The travel narrative is the oldest in the world. The story of st the story the wanderer tells to the folks gathered around the fire after his or her return from a journey. This is what I saw. And it is the origin of narrative fiction, too. The Traveler enlivening, enlivening, a hey, yo, okay, well, I didn't catch that off. I do apologize. Hopefully, you guys were able to see it. Ooh, that's a tiny island. Easter Island. With the uh, Maui heads there. A small green dot. Looks more like a yellow dot, but, I, you know. In the middle of the Pacific. Six hours flat to anywhere. So we're on Easter Island. Okay, I, I was looking at the screenshots and I was trying to figure out where to best put my face. So, I think I made a good call. I think I made a good call. Hmm. Let's go to a bar. Let me turn my microphone down just a little bit. It looks like it's getting up there a bit. A bit more than it has been. I have not made any adjustments on this. Hopefully you're still with me. Okay, that is not what I meant to do. I just slightly clicked on it and uh, trying to get it out on my other monitor and just so lightly clicking it maxed it all the way out so I do hope it was not too loud there if I were a professional I would edit this stuff out but I'm not I'm not a super professional <laughs> uh, the, a chance meeting the rain came out of nowhere a curtain of water obscuring the view from the terrace I can watch tourists in most other places. Let's look at these Moai heads. I guess that's what they're talking about, the Moai heads. Um, Moai, the, the giant basalt sculptures that made the island famous. Didn't mind the rain. They watched tourists running away. With the same dignified and indifferent expression they sported for the last centuries. After the stifling heat of that day, the sudden shower was, ble was a blessing. Yet the tourists ran. Soon the bar was full. So a hango roa. Uh, soon the last group of tourists found shelter under an awning on the terrace. The bar was a popular place. The view was beautiful, and the beer was cold, local, and expensive. As always, the tourists all looked the same. 
if you listen to their accounts, uh, to, as accents, my word, you could try and guess where they came from. I shouldn't think anybody was on Easter Island. I thought that was just kind of like a... That was just out there. <laughs> you know what I meant? So I actually didn't know there was people out there. I mean, it makes sense, you know, uh, that people would want to set up out there for tour, you know, for tourism. Since there are, you know, the legends, like, did the, did aliens put the heads there, that sort of thing? Guess we'll listen. In situations like that, you do not wish to eavesdrop, but you hear. Looks like we'll spend some time here, said someone. We might as well make ourselves comfortable. I heard chairs and tables being rearranged. So, who are you all? Asked someone else. They're all Europeans, still excited they were on an island over 2,000 miles away from the nearest continent. One of them got my attention. Was it my gray hair or the eyes? I would think maybe it was my raggedy beard. <laughs> um... A lot of people have gray hair. So I would assume it would be more likely to be, you know, something to do with his eyes. Maybe he had, like, you know, crazy eyes. Oh. Her eyes were shrewd. She could see, she could see uh, my, uh, my shrewd eyes. Or crazy eyes. I wouldn't say crazy. Okay, I was just noticing they, uh. Hmm. Interesting. The, uh, the photo there says Larry Portman Dreamstime.com. Okay. Assuming they've got permission to use this, uh, this picture. Her eyes were shoes. Sometime earlier, she walked in, looked around, ordered a beer, and paid. She sat at the table on the terrace and locked her eyes on the sea. Shortly before the rain, she moved under the awning. I knew the type. Always on the move. She's one of the people who couldn't stay in one place for long, and I bet she cared less for the place that she visited than for the journey itself than the others came. It makes sense, you know. If somebody wanted to stick to themselves, they would not be in a bar uh, or in a touristy place there, you know. Although, I mean, this is me just realizing that people were on Easter Island. I, again, I thought it was just out there. Later that evening, for a bunch of strangers, they got along well. They talked over their beers, joking, laughing, getting to know one another. I listened. We just arrived, and frankly, I needed to meet some new people. The woman raised her class. I'm Henriette, and he's Henry. The older man smiled a crooked smile and nodded. You could see the resemblance. The same eyes. The same no bullshit attitude. The brother and sister? I can see them being brother and sister. Although it says older man, does it mean that he that the man is older than she is, or that the man is older than the, the main character? The older lady from Portugal was called Adila. Henriette and her father came from the UK. Ah. Okay, gotcha. She was named after her dad. Okay, that makes sense. I was just wondering if they... <laughs> I was just thinking of the funny idea of... Uh, uh, love at first sight, and then it being really awkward, you know, like, yeah, my name's Henry. Really? My name's Henriette. That's a little awkward. <laughs> uh, that could be a bit awkward. Um, what'd be really awkward is like, uh, if somehow they had the exact same name, That'd be a little awkward. Uh, the younger woman, uh, Martine, was from Germany. 
And the guy from Poland was called Tomek. The rain stopped, giving way to a beautiful sunset, and they didn't even notice. But who are you all? But who are you all? Henriette asked a, a few beers later. What are your stories? Ooh, I love a good story. But I'm not sure if, if we've got enough time uh, for everyone to tell one, Adela, Adelia answered. One that won't be enough. Well, are any of you leaving tomorrow? I know I'm not, Henriette said. Let's spend the next few days together. See the island. I'm sure we, we can find a guide here uh, and we can tell each other stories. They agreed. Okay, so this is the premise of the game then. Let's pick a theme, Henriette said, and made a dramatic pause. That was all ears. Full of wax. Uh, what was the journey that changed you most? Wanderlust Travel Stories, Chapter 1. Looks like we're, uh... Oh, we can... Ooh. So, Henry and Henriette was in Antarctica. Two hours. Today is always going tomorrow. Adelia was from Africa. Does that mean the story is like three hours? It's not a love story. Tomek in Europe. Martine. The essential gap year. Five hours. Really nobody had any trip in America? <laughs> Be good. It'd be funny if I was down there. I'd be like, yeah. Trying to change me most. Yeah, I went, went to the next county. Did a thing. It's pretty eventful. Came back. It's like a three hour trip. <laughs> Although I can see why Henriette uh, would want to tell a story because, I mean, who, who's been to Antarctica? Sea fever. Although. The point is like at the tip of South America. So I'm confused. When it says Antarctica. Is this really, is this the estimated time that it would take to get through the story? Five hours? Is this, it's not an early access, so. Just, just checking real quick. Um, so, uh, I wonder if there'll be, like, any updates, because it's chapter one, so may, or, there might be, like, maybe the story is set up, like, uh, in chapter one, here's the sto here's this theme, then chapter two, another theme, so I don't know how long this game is, this might be quite the extensive game. I'm curious if they go to Antarctica. So let's, uh, so yeah, Antarctica. They watch the sunrise. The lonely statue. So we're going to learn about Antarctica. There was a distinct chill in the twilight air, sat there, suspended between night and day. The smell of sea and the sound of the waves were even more noticeable. And then there was light. Oh, oops. Almost slowly, imperceptibly, the row of giant silhouettes appeared against the brightening sky. I thought I was going to say, like, they started moving. I was like, what? This took a twist. <laughs> they watched it all. They sat on their blankets, yawning and whispering, trying not to disturb the atmosphere of the Rapa Nui sunrise. They noticed the statue. Did you see the statue near the entrance? Asked Martine when they went for a walk sometime later. I wonder why they put it there. There's one statue standing with its back to the others, isolated from the ma from the main ahu. Maybe shy. Maybe it was shy. Maybe the statue was shy. A 
punishment? Maybe it was a punishment, wondered Tomek. Or maybe it just needed solitude, said, uh, smiled Henriette. We all need some, some from time to time, and I guess my story is all is about that. She took a sip from her thermos, giving them time to focus. Sometimes, the sea beckons. <laughs> maybe the statue being turned away from the uh, others was uh, the uh, the ancient Easter Island and uh, telling of the uh, Blair Witch Project. That's a really random thought. Almost as random as these Easter Island things uh, making me think of uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon. That's really random. I think that took place on Easter Island. Suppose I mean, it didn't take place on Easter Island. Real life, but in the story I think it was supposed to be on Easter Island. Uh, sometimes the sea beckons and I have to answer it, she said, looking at the waves. Okay. Just need a little bit of a intro to the uh, to her story. Sea fever. Sea penguins. I feel like this is probably better. This story would probably be better if narrated by. I was gonna say uh, uh, Morgan Freeman, but honestly, most things would be better. <laughs> narrated from, uh, by uh, Morgan Freeman. Oh my, we've got like a stress and fatigue meter. Oh, and this is in London, okay. We're going to have to actually deal with stress? Our apartment, London. Are you ready, darling? I took a long, quizzical look at my sea bag. Then at my husband. He was leaning against the door, graceful as a cat. Our cat, by comparison, was a shapeless blob of fluff. She stared coldly at me from the hallway, clearly disgruntled by my packing. Yeah, almost. Almost, I reached out and took a manila folder from the nightstand. I still don't understand why you do it, he said, and I sensed some tension under his careless smile. Was he worried? What is this about the case? Is Henrietta a detective? Or is, are we talking like a case of something, you know, like a... <laughs> talking about a uh, travel story and a case. A case of money that was accidentally left at the airport and a limo driver and his crazy friend Driving across country uh, to return to uh, Miss Samsonite. The case are to see, I asked, shoving the folder into the bag. Both, I guess. You know me, I just have to. You must go down to seas again, to the lonely sea and the sky, he said, hugging me. You and your sea fever. Says the man who's been around the world twice. I never sailed to the Antarctic on a tall ship. It is quite tall, isn't it? <sighs> I sighed into his chest. He chuckled. He chuckled. I looked up. You're worried, I confirmed my suspicion. His back was unusually tense. What's wrong? Darling, you're sailing into the Antarctic. I'm scared you're going to fall into the sea and freeze. Or be eaten by a bear. Bears live, to, live in the Arctic. Not this again. Bears only live in the Arctic. There's a difference between the Arctic and Antarctic. One's got ants and the other don't. Also, one has bears and the other so I mean, seriously. Information needs to be correct. A rogue bear who was so fed up with his life in the Arctic that he decided to move south or you'll be abducted by penguins. There are penguins there, right? You're lucky I married you for your looks. You're being overprotective. I'll be fine. I'll be back at the beginning of December, just in time for Christmas preparations. You better be. If you're not, I'll, I'll, you'll miss your birthday present.
Okay, let's catch a plane. Looking out the window. Are we seeing... Is there something on the wing? Something? It was raining, of course, when I boarded the train to Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire? Okay, I think that's probably how it's pronounced. I planned to take a standard plat to set... Did I say plat? My plat! <laughs> a standard plat! I don't want any of those deep plats, you know, like with with deep suffering. Just a, just a moderate plat, you know. Eh, like a like back pain, you know. Bit of a headache. <laughs> Actually, that's... No, that's really not it. Plat is... I did not... Yeah, what is the definition of a plat? It's not just pain, but it is something that's painful. It's kind of like a mission? Journey? It probably would be accurate, actually. I plan to stick it... Come on, shut I plan to take a standard flight to Sao, pa Sao Paulo, then fly to Santiago, and from there to Punta Arenas. But then I realized that I needed to clear my head and have some sort of privacy before being locked up with eight other people for five weeks. This is like a nightmare. The military plane was just a ticket. I'd fly straight to the Falkland Islands and uh, with only one stop to refuel in Cape Verde. I'd never been to the Falkland Islands before, but of course Dad had been there before, before I was born. Uh, there were some photographs of the islands that used to grace the walls of his study. I always thought it was Scotland. The same bare rocks, the same gray skies. No wonder the British were so fond of them. The plane was huge, unattractive, and surprisingly comfortable. It looked like I was the only civilian on board. Henry? Boomed a voice behind me in a broad Scottish accent. Young Henry Taylor. I felt myself grin from ear to ear. I turned around and was immediately embraced by a boulder of a man. It's good to see you, Alice Dare. That is this Alice Dare here? Aye, that I am, lass. How are you then? Off on your big Antarctica trip, are we? He looked over my shoulder. And your dad? Yeah, he's on curse. Oh, he's going to tourist route this time. On a cruise. He passed on five weeks of acute discomfort and the chance to freeze his bollocks off. Ha! He is getting old. Has he started working again? You know, since... Hmm. Interesting. So our fatigue goes up if we answer no. And our stress goes up if I clutch my talisman. Talisman? I'm recording this bit late at night. Uh, I was feeling pretty well awake until I started getting stuff set up. And then I was like, I'm beginning to get sleepy. <laughs> I record most of these. At, I record only at night here lately. But uh, I was like, okay, I probably shouldn't. But I'm in the middle. I've already set up to record. So I, I bet I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I'm just going to go. So, uh, I do apologize. I'm being, I'm doing such a terrible job just reading. Hmm. I guess if we're going to be on a plane, we're going to be able to rest soon, you know. I'm sure we're not going to be flying to Antarctica. Where's Sao Paulo? Is that in Portugal? I feel like somebody's mentioned Portugal, but I think it might be where one of the other uh, one of the other characters are. So I don't know if Portugal is related to this. Uh, but anyway, we're going to assume that we can rest on the plane. No, I answered. Calm, sad. My good mood suddenly disappeared. The tarmac looks more drab and gray than before. Excuse me. And a gust of cold wind rushed past, chilling me to the bone. Are you alright, lass? Not really, no. Not, not really, no. Like Dad uh, used to say, somebody just walked over my grave. Seems like a bit of a paradox. 
He put his hand on my shoulder and sighed. The Germans call it Reichsfaber. Didn't fret yourself over it last. That was a horrible... It wasn't a Scottish accent, but that was a horrible Scottish pronunciation. I, I nodded, but something told me it wasn't so simple. So what happened to her dad? What's with a sudden... What's the, what's the history with her dad? And now we're uh, doing the uh, Indiana Jones uh, thing. On a plane working, the manila folder felt heavy in my hands as I leafed through the papers again. The case was a representation, representative action against a major multinational. I can't mention any names, but you've all heard of them, I'm sure. It was a noble cause, but likely to be tied up in court for the foreseeable future. I'd have to spend hours upon hours searching for precedent, going over everything with a with a fine tooth comb so we could make a nuanced case. If I went for it, I'd be buried for months, maybe years. What was she combing the folder? Seems weird. I'd be stuck in London working long, tedious hours, likely appealing and reappealing. Suppose that's the price you had to pay for justice. So she's a lawyer, okay. Closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and sighed. Alice Dare shook my arm. Well, my assumption we were dressed on the plane was wrong. <laughs> Somehow I'd managed to sleep through the... Oh! Okay, we did get some sleep. Uh, somehow I'd managed to sleep through the landing in Cape Verde. I woke up when Alice Dare shook my arm. Coffee? I could murder a cup of a tea. I would slaughter it. I wouldn't drink it. I would just kill it. Eh, we'll take the coffee. Yes, that would be lovely, I said, trying to shake off the unpleasant dreams I'd had. We'll be nice. We'll not be, we'll not be violent. Took the cup and looked at the manila folder in my lap. The documents had fallen onto the floor while I, while I was asleep. Careful not to spill the coffee, I put the documents back and closed the folder. The strange sense of foreboding crept up on me again. Wonder what happens if you max out stuff. To... You can't, you can't get like a bad ending. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think because it's not like you can die, you know, because she's alive telling the story later. Unless the character were like, did she just faded out? Of... <laughs> she was a ghost all along. Oh, we are getting close to Antarctica. Oh crap! Okay, I should say. Uh, we took off and the AC kicked in, blasting me with cold air. Antarctica, the last free place on Earth. No civilization, no nations, no governments. The only human activity followed, uh, allowed there was for science. In theory, at least. As long as the treaty held. From time to time, I could make out the lights of lonely ships in the vast ocean thousands of feet below. This time, I didn't dream. Everything just seemed to slip away. The only thing that was real was the journey ahead. I woke up. What's with the shoes? Mount Pleasant, the Falkland Islands. Military aircraft uh, do not land gracefully. They drop from the sky toward the unsuspecting ground. I ran my tongue around my teeth after we slammed down. I could swear some of them had been knocked into my skull. I left the plane and was greeted by by the cool salty air. Down Moreland uh, covered. Down Moreland covered the landscape for as far as the eye could see. Why is Moreland? Looks like we're going to have uh, stress either way. What well, actually tells the uh, date up there? Tuesday, October 6th. 16th. It doesn't tell the year, though. Um, hmm. Where's my skipper? Where was my skipper? I was getting hungry and starting to feel the familiar tenseness I had, I had when, blood, when my blood sugar was low. I'd have killed for a full English breakfast. Man, she is full of murder! He was waiting for me outside. For a moment, I thought my husband was right, and there actually were bears in the Antarctic. Just grizzlies, not polar bears. 
Redo! We patted each other on the shoulder and shook forearms firmly. How's it going, kid? Do you want to go straight to yachts, or do you fancy some penguin watching? Hmm. Let's look at some penguins. Suddenly my nose is itching. Okay, so the penguins are at Bertha's Beach. I don't know if we need to ask Bertha for first or what. Rado parked as close as he could to the beach. A sea lion colony greeted us with a chorus of trumpets and barks. We could see some of them uh, surfing, the, surfing the breakers that were rolling in off the ocean. Even though they flopped around the beach awkwardly, the moment they were in the water, they moved with such swiftness and grace. Grace, I watched them, and we had less stress, so that's good. I watched them transfix, and I almost forget about the penguins. Right on tugged at my sleeve. The dazzling white sand, which reminded me of the beaches I'd seen in the Caribbean, was speckled with washed-up kelp. The waves boomed and crashed. Albatrosses drifted overhead, and the vast expanse of water made me feel oddly elated. I was almost jumping up and down with excitement. Where we are, the penguins? How far away are the penguins? We walked for what seemed like miles and miles. At some point, we uh, had to cross an ice-cold stream barefoot, which had us cursing and howling with laughter as we made our way through the frigid water. Just when we'd lost our hope and decided to head back, three penguins swam the shore, got out of the water, and waddled past us, completely ignoring our presence. Soon there were penguins everywhere. I thought they looked like kindergartners dressed in tuxedos. <laughs> Woke up suddenly and saw low grass co covered hills rolling past me. You know it's uncanny, Rado said. This ability of yours to fall asleep in 30 seconds. How do you do it? I shrugged. No idea, and it only works when I sell. I have terrible bouts of insomnia when I'm in London. I wish I could t just be like. But I can't. <laughs> I can get the insomnia part. Two churches, a post office, a police station, and a school. Stanley was not a big town. Went to the yacht. The yacht was beautiful. Its sleek, well-built hull was painted a stunning vermilion that could be seen from miles away. Its tall masts and huge, solid winches looked like they were ready for everything nature could throw at them. Five other people were already on board, and the other two were joining us in Ushiaya. I think maybe I pronounced that right. It is very rare for a word to have five vowels and only two consonants. The first person I bumped into was Chris. Typical, he said. I've just made myself the perfect cup of coffee and you appear. I should have known. I gave him a hug. Good to see you too, you grumpy old bugger. He pushed a cup of coffee into my hands. Bow, cabin, dipped on the lower bunk. I wasn't tired. You're, you're slightly tired. You're getting there. I wasn't tired, but once I had climbed into my bunk and unrolled the sleeping bag, I decided to close my eyes for a moment. No dreams came, just a perfect, a peaceful night's sleep. Okay, the stuff draw. Hmm. So we're optimistic now. It's good to be optimistic. But I think I am going to go in in the video here. Uh, I'm probably going to be following in her footsteps uh, pretty soon and going to sleep, getting some sleep. Um, like I said, I, I knew it was going to be like a visual novel kind of game. But I know there'd be so many choices, which is which is really interesting. Um, hmm. I wonder if there's... I wonder how, I wonder if there's different endings you can get for each story. So 
that is something I wonder. And if it is like how I said, where there's different chapters, where this was a theme of a uh, tale of a journey that changed, do you know? Uh, like, uh, I mean, she's on an island, she's on Easter Island, you know, in the future. So maybe she was like, yeah, I'm here for, uh, to be a lawyer, you know, do a lawyer thing. Maybe she got here and was like, I'm not, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. So maybe that was a, that would be a thing that would change her, you know. But I wonder if, uh, like how different of endings you can get in each story. And if there are multiple chapters where they tell different stories again, I wonder if that affects that, you know, like, depending on how, how it, this ended, whether she told a story in the next chapter, you know, and something that happened here would have an impact. You know what I mean? So I wonder. I wonder if it, I wonder if it goes that deep. It may not be. It may just be a thing where it's like a bottleneck, you know. You make all the choices, but it all kind of funnels into the same same gist, you know, kind of like the uh, uh, the Telltale games, you know. Uh, they, you know, they have a big thing where, you know, there's a lot of choices, you know, you can make, but they all basically, you know, you get the same ending regardless. So, uh, I wonder if it's like that. But the, uh, but the stress and fatigue meters, that's an interesting thing. Uh, too. Again, I wonder how that comes into play, how that changes the story, you know. And whether or not it's going to be the same for all the stories, you know. So anyway, yeah. Interesting game. I, I like it. And, and uh, you know, it's already been slightly educational. Uh, learned a little bit about Easter Island. Learned slightly about penguins. So, uh, and that was just, you know, scratching the surface of the game, so. Uh, yeah, if it, if this one really is like a two or three hour story and another story like five hours long, then yeah, it's uh, a lot to it. But anyway, the link will be down in, the down in the description below if you want to check the game out for yourself. It is $20 regular price. But until October 3rd, it's going to be for $18. Uh, it's just been released. It came out uh, yesterday. Day, uh, day before yesterday. And uh, so, yeah. It's, uh, you know, most I think most games on Steam do uh, come out a little bit of, the, of a discount. A lot of them do anyway. So, until October 3rd, it's going to be 18 So, anyway. I do sincerely hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks uh, if you're if you're listening to this, you made it to the end. I appreciate you making it through uh, my somewhat drowsy reading. Hopefully, you, unless you're driving, or you know, were uh, hopefully you're closer to sleep, or as close to sleep as I am. <laughs>